Be watchful, be alert. Good word for us at the start of Advent season. Uh, what I want to argue today in this reading, in these uh, from these readings, is that God wants us to be attuned to the present moment as much as possible. That's where we encounter God. We can't encounter Him in the past for crying out loud. The past is already gone for us. No longer exists for us. By definition, is that which was and no longer is. And we're not going to encounter God in the future. There goes the future is that which is not yet. It doesn't exist either. God is in the here and now. For him, everything is here and now. That's kind of hard for us to grasp because we're in the here and now. We're in this flux we call time. St. Augustine uh, famously reflects on it in his famous work, The Confessions. He has a whole chapter devoted to time. He says, yes, the past doesn't exist, nor does the future exist, and the present really doesn't exist either. It's in constant flux. It's gone. Uh, God knew from all eternity I was going to do that just now. Uh, <clears throat> actually, he, yeah, he knows from all eternity because he's in eternity. Everything is present to Almighty God. In its immediacy, the Catechism says, to God, all moments of time are present in their immediacy. That is a real, uh, you feel the stretch in the back of your brain thinking about that? Wow, everything from all human history is present all at once in the eternal now, in its immediacy, like this is happening right now. Imagine all time and space available to you all at once. That's where God dwells in eternity, immediacy to God. Uh, however, for us, we live in this flux and uh, present moment is in flux. You can't really stop it. It's like a point on a line. Otherwise, you'd, you'd be able to cut it up into a little bit of past and a little bit of future. Like you can't really pin it down. It's a moving target all the time. When you are trying to, 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 to define or describe what time is, you're at a loss. This is what St. Augustine famously said. You know, you ask me what time it is, I'll tell you what time it is, you know. Uh, but then when you ask me what time is, I'm like, I don't, I'm not really sure. It's hard to explain what, the, what it is when you really press into it. There's nothing there. Because it's moving all the time. And so he finally says, look, the present moment exists. Yes, we know it exists. Uh, but it exists insofar as it tends towards non-existence. I'll let you go home, have a cup of coffee, scratch your head, think about that one. All right. Uh, the present moment. But the present moment touches eternity. Think about it. That's the contact point with eternity. There's an immediacy there between the present moment and heaven and eternity and God. He's present to us there. Can't dialogue with God unless we're attuned to the present moment. Watch, he says, and be alert. Take heed. Oh, what is that? What is behind that? It's very simple. Our Lord wants us to focus on what we're doing. People talk about mindfulness, mindfulness in some yoga sense, some Eastern um, religion sense. Hey, it's extremely Christian, uh, but we're not just mindful for the sake of like emptying ourselves. We're mindful to fill ourselves with Almighty God, with His presence. With his will, we attend to him and to the duties of our state in life, to whatever the, his will is manifesting at that moment in our lives. Oh boy, you got to be careful when you use the word manifest. Uh, sounds like, yeah, anyway, new agey uh, religion. So look, uh, forget all that. Uh, mindfulness and, and manifesting through our positive energies and all that garbage, okay? 
Attend to Almighty God. That's taking your eye off the ball. We ought to be attending to him like a handmaid. Uh, Psalm 123, I like this. <clears throat> yeah, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God. Uh, we just attend to him all day long. That's being watchful. That's taking heed. That's being alert. And it's in little things, ordinariness of our lives that uh, we uh, tend not to notice. But we wander away from his ways. There's so much goodness in this uh, prophet Isaiah's. It's the ultimate prophet in my view. Uh, things he says here are very profound along these lines of watchfulness. He says things like, why do you let us wander, O Lord? from your ways and harden our hearts that we fear you not. Uh, <clears throat> we wander from the present moment, from the presence of God, from our attentive service to him in the present moment. We wander from that. Uh, we lose a sense of the conscious contact of Almighty God. We should pray always, St. Paul says, we should try to maintain this habitual awareness of the presence of God in our lives. Reminding ourselves who we are, what we're doing down here, where we came from. And who is our Lord that we're serving. And we're in constant consultation with the Lord, we should be. In dialogue with him all the time. About the smallest little details of our lives. Lord, what do you want me to do? Like St. Paul blind on the road to Damascus, can't see anything. Like, who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And then he tells him, you know, going to Damascus, blah, blah, blah. All right, look, that's it, man. What do you want me to do? What St. Paul said on the road to Damascus, blind, standing there. Should be all of us. They had to take him by the hand and lead him in. Uh, but we should be asking the Lord all the time. Do you want me to do the dishes right now? I can answer that. Yes. No. Says the one who procrastinated more than anybody growing up washing the dishes. But anyway, I was uh, bucking the will of God. Eventually, I had to go in there and do it. After the kitchen was a total disaster zone, I uh, finally went in there. But look, what it, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? All throughout the day. Our eyes on the hand of our mistress. Our, we are the handmaids of the Lord. What do you want me to do? Okay, now what? What do you want me to do next? Consulting with Almighty God in a continuous dialogue. Uh, if we do that, we won't wander from his ways. As Isaiah says here, uh, we were not mindful of you in our ways. That very word mindful comes up in the translation here of the lectionary. We were mindful. Would that we were mindful of you in, in our ways. Mindful of you. We lose the conscious contact with our creator throughout the day. We get going. And we might throw some prayers out there hastily in the morning or whatever. And then we get swept up into the tidal currents you know into this rip tide rips us out there and we just like lose it and then we're a basket case and uh, at the end of the day we look over the trail of wreckage behind us and we're like oh man um, <clears throat> that's what happens when we wander away from the will of God so the spiritual life is very mysterious it has to be an ongoing thing God, in the hidden ordinariness of our lives, God meets us there to God. The present moment is perpetually present. And this present moment holds infinite riches beyond our wildest dreams. I love that sentence from Jean-Pierre de Cossard, this classical spiritual work called Abandonment to Divine Providence, my favorite book after the Bible and the Catechism. Okay, 
Obeying him into divine providence. Do yourself a favor. It's only like 119 pages. Read that blasted thing because it is uh, it's, it's absolutely on target. Incredible biblical, incredible depth of spiritual spirituality. The mysteriousness of the spiritual person who sees through the veil of the ordinary, through simple bread and wine on our altar. And we don't need some great rend the heavens and come down, you know, like uh, touch the mountains with smoke and wreathe them in fire so that we see you everywhere. You know, that's what we want. That's what we're calling out for. We're like, hey, that's what I want. Dramatic signs. We think grandiosely. We don't see God in the ordinary thing. Things of our lives, daily events of our lives. That's where we must discover him if we have eyes of faith. So the present moment holds infinite riches beyond our wildest dreams. That's where we will encounter God. Focusing on one day at a time. Our Lord said that long before they started throwing that slogan around in 12-step programs. Our Lord said, Matthew 6, 34... Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. Stay in the day. Stay in the moment. Take heed. Be watchful and alert.